Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. Do you remember this quilt block? I just made this for a tutorial. You will want to go watch me make this block before you watch this video if you're interested in making this quilt top. Or you can just watch this video and then go get caught up. But I will put a card up here somewhere and you can go there right now if you want and then come back or you'll find the link in the description, in the pinned comment and on the end screen. You are bound to find it somehow. <laughs> I liked this block so much because it was so easy and big. And I'm going to make a quilt top with this. And I only need 15 blocks total. I have actually started working on this so I wouldn't have to do it all during the course of the recording. But I did save some steps to show you guys. So let's just get started. One of the first things I wanted to show you guys is how I work assembly line fashion. I have a lot of things done and I, I do them like all at once. Normally I would have cut all my blocks, but I saved some fabric to show you how I cut them. But then like I'll go to the machine and I'll put this piece to here and I do all of those at once. I just send one after another through the machine and it's all just, you know, string piecing. They're all connected by a string. So quick and easy that way. And I have all these done. Same thing. I just did them one after another. But here's how I cut. So what I did is I just took my fabric. Here's the salvages. I have the two salvages here. So I just unrolled my fabric. I happen to have a bolt of this. And then... I roughly cut 10 inches, like maybe more like 10 and a half, just a rough cut. And then I, I take it and I fold it like this. And then I just trim each side. So I have 10 inches this way because I want 10 inch blocks. Again, you'll need to go watch the other video. So now I need to cut 10 inches this way. Now now you could do two layers of this, which would be cutting through four fabric thicknesses at once, whatever you're comfortable with. I kind of just like to do one at a time. And I'm cutting on my number one line. And then I know I have to go over to number 11. And now I have two nice 10 inch squares. And then I just move this over to the number one line. I just like to stay with the same things, number 1 and 11, number 1 and 11. And then I don't get confused. So I would just go ahead and cut all that I need of this. You're going to be able to get four blocks across because you only need 40 inches total. This is all that's left for scrap. I will give you the instructions in just a minute. I have to figure it out as to how much you need for each uh, fabric. Let me figure that out right now, the yardage. I'll be right back. So here's what we have. If you're making this exact size block, and this ends up being a little bit, you know, like kind of close to 14 and a half inches square, so you can certainly trim to 14 or 14 and a quarter. For your big piece, your 10 inch piece, you could get one and one eighth of a yard, but you'd have to be cutting exact. And some stores won't sell smaller than a quarter. So just go ahead and get one and a quarter and your little bit of leftovers will go in your crumb pile. So one and a quarter yards of this stuff. For your small square, you only need one third of a yard. You I don't have this to show you the cutting, but you would just cut a five inch strip. Then you would cut across five inches, you end up getting eight in each strip. Now we only need 15 for the quilt top I'm making, so each time you cut, you will have one piece left over, so you can make a block like this for some other project, maybe a matching pillow, whatever you want. Or you don't have to sew the leftovers together, you can just you know use them for whatever you want. So for these guys, wonky number one and wonky number two, you need two thirds of a yard of each color. And that's it. So I showed you how I cut my 10 inch squares. Now for wonky number one and wonky number two, it's just the same thing. And when it's not on the bolt, it's much easier for me to just cut. Now this was not on the bolt, so I just take my fabric like this. Let's show you right now. Okay, here's the salvage. So I just fold it in half. 
up to the salvage. And if I don't have a straight edge, which I normally don't, I just go ahead and trim that edge. And then I'll just go over, for these it's five and a half inches, so I would just go over five and a half inches and cut, five and a half and cut, and I need four strips of, of the wonky, wonky one and wonky two. I just screwed up in explaining this to you. <laughs> I did not screw up in cutting them, but in explaining. So I'm going to go ahead and start over with the explaining with this strip. It's the same. I still start on my one inch line. And then these are five and a quarter. I may have said five and a half a while ago. I seem to think I did. But these are five and a quarter by ten and a quarter. You will get all the measurements in the first video. And so now I know I'm going to the 11. And the reason I start on the number one is because the, the edge, it's like an extra quarter of an inch. So I just like to start on a line. I can see it better. So I'm going to 11 and a quarter. And then I just slide it down to the number one line. And I just know 11 and a quarter. And it just makes it that much easier to, you know, know what you're doing. And these are my scraps. Aren't they beautiful? That's all going in my crumb pile. Now I'm going to work on putting these together. And as you remember in the other video, I put them right side down and I'm going to stack them. I'm going to start by lining them up on a line on the right hand side. So I have brown and then green and then brown, and then green. So I've been doing four at a time. And then I'm coming in at an inch and a half and making a mark, scoot it over to the line, inch and a half, and I make a mark. And then I'm cutting from mark to mark. I flip these over, And voila, I'll be sewing these two together and so on and so on. But I'm going to prepare the others also. And then I'll see you at the machine and I'm going to show you a little trick for when you're sewing on diagonals to make it match up. I just have two other pieces of fabric and I'm going to show you. So if you match up your points so that the tips match up. Obviously you're going to line up, you know, your edge. But if you start by matching up the tips, you can see here, see how one fabric is a little shorter than the other? The the fabric in the back, you know, it sticks out a little bit like here. But that's okay. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you match up your points and sew. Now you can see when I open it up that this piece is sticking up a little bit taller. Depending on the angle, you know, it would stick up even more maybe if there was more of an angle. But that's fine and dandy if that's the easiest way for you to do it because you can just trim that. This one actually came out pretty good on the bottom. But what you can do, and especially if there's more of an angle, when you put your pieces together, Instead of lining up, it's hard to explain, just see if I can show you here. Instead of matching up the points right here, you can slide the fabric up or down depending on the angle and which way you sew. But what you want to do is imagine that you're going to be sewing about a quarter of an inch from the edge, about. So what you want to do is make the fabric match up at that point. So in this case, I would slide my fabric down a little bit. Let me just do it and then I'll show you. I'll use a pin as a pointer. So you can see I slid this top fabric down a little bit because I'm imagining that my needle is going to come in right about here and that's kind of where those fabrics are matching. I could pull it up a hair. So like right there. I know it seems complicated but when you do this a whole bunch of times it's going to get very easy to just 
think about looking here about a quarter of an inch in and matching up your fabric at that point. So let me sew that and I'll show you. And now you can see that matched up almost perfectly and on the bottom also. So it's just a little trick. So now the way I would do this is I would get my wonky strips here and I'm just going to take two and I know they need to go like that so I'm just going to flip this guy and then I just look up here and say oh where's my quarter of an inch oh about right there and then I go I line up my edge and then I grab my next two and I always put them together to make sure they're right flip this guy over right there and I send that one through and I just go through the entire stack that way and I'm just going to finish this up seriously you can do this in just one sitting doesn't take long at all and this is what we end up with it looks like a whole long line of flags or banners I'm just going to snip those apart and then I would press them all open. I'll let me do that. So what I would do next is set myself up to do the assembly line work of putting this onto this. I know I want the brown to touch. I want all of these, well, some of them upside down. I'll fix that when I go to the machine. But I want all of these to go in this direction and I will double check at the machine. So I just would put these all together and I would sew these together like I did right here. These are done. Then I would go with these and I did these all sending them through one after another. All these it doesn't take long at all and I would go to the machine with that and I would sew those together and then all my blocks would be done. I'm actually going to sign off for this video. I'm going to make this a two-part series I want to take my time and put these together probably tomorrow because right now I have other videos that I'm working on. So I will put these all together. It'll give you a chance to go catch up and see how to make the big block if you don't know how to make it yet. And the next video we will be putting the blocks together and we'll be done. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!